Here is some assistance on the Topic 3 Cycle 1 material on momentum. We'll go over a couple of the questions from the practice quiz. So here's a basic one looking for the momentum of two cars. Something to notice, uh, we have a Chevrolet SUV and a smart car. The Chevrolet SUV with a mass of 2,800 kilograms has four times the mass of the smart car. However, the smart car is going twice as fast. So we know momentum has a direct relationship with mass and velocity. So we would expect more mass to be more momentum and more velocity to be more momentum. But if the SUV has four times the mass and the smart car has twice the velocity, how much more momentum will the SUV have? Well, if you looked at those basic uh, proportions, four over two would be twice the momentum. Let's see how that plays out. First, organize your problem. This is going to be increasingly important as we go on in the year. Just organizing what you have in front of you, giving it a variable, and then looking for the relationship that might work. You know, momentum, P equals mass times velocity. So for the Chevrolet, it's the mass, 2,800 kilograms times 20 meters per second, or 56,000 kilogram meters per second. Well, the smart car has a mass of 700 kilograms and a velocity of 40 meters per second, so it'll have a momentum of 28,000 kilogram meters per second, which is half that of the Chevrolet. So um, that's how we just calculate the momentum. Um, we saw that the smart car was one-fourth the mass, but going twice as fast, that led it to have half the momentum. If they're going the same speed, how much more momentum would the SUV, Chevrolet SUV have? Well, because it has four times the mass, it would have four times the momentum. Okay, now we're looking at impulse. Remember that impulse is the change in momentum. So here they both slow down to a stop in 10 seconds. That means a stop would be zero momentum, so they're going to lose all of their momentum. Um, the change in momentum is impulse. That equals force times time. That means we have the change in momentum or impulse, and we have the time, so we can plug in to solve what we're missing, the force. So for the Chevrolet, it loses all its momentum, so it has its change in momentum is negative 56,000 kilogram meters per second. Set that equal to 10 times F, so the force would equal negative 5,600 newtons. Um, whereas the smart car loses 28,000 kilogram meters per second of momentum, set that equal to the impulse, or force times time, 10F, so we get that the force is negative 2,800 newtons, or half the force that it took to stop the Chevrolet. Let's take a look at the next problem. Now, um, we have a bike and a rider slow from 15 meters per second to stopped in 5 seconds with a force of negative 20 newtons. Now, uh, one thing to note before we start, I think that this, I intended this to be negative 200 newtons to, to make the uh, situation more realistic. We'll see at the end why it's not quite, well, negative 20 newtons isn't the most realistic number to use. Um, let's take a look at the impulse. So impulse is a force times time. So, and that's the change in momentum. So we're going to look at what we have so far. We have velocity, we have time, we have force. Oh, so I have force and time. I'm just going to use the formula impulse equals force times time. So here's all the values we have. The final velocity is zero, a stop. So the final momentum is zero. The initial velocity was 15 meters per second. So we knew that the, the time was five seconds and the force was negative 20 newtons. The impulse was force times time, or negative 20 newtons times five seconds. That gives us negative 100 newton seconds. How much did their bike and rider's momentum change? Well, that's what the impulse is, the change in momentum. So impulse J equals delta P. Remember, delta means change, change in momentum. So it's the same answer, negative 100 kilogram meters per second. Now, what is the combined mass of the bike and the rider together? We know the impulse. We don't know their mass together, but we have a lot of the pieces along the way. We know their velocity, their final velocity, and initial velocity. So let's look at how the, we could possibly solve this. The final momentum of the bike and the rider is zero because they came to a stop, so their mass times zero. Whatever that value of their mass was, it becomes zero when multiplied by a velocity of zero. Their initial momentum, though, was not zero. Um, they were going 15 meters per second, so we get 15 times their mass. We don't know what the mass was. We do know that the momentum changed by 100 newton seconds, or 100 kilogram meters per second, because that was the impulse, the force times time. So we know impulse equals negative 100 equals the change in momentum. The final momentum was zero. The initial momentum was 15m. 
So we get that the impulse of negative 100 equals negative 15m when we solve for that. Negative 100 equals negative 15m, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 15. That's the opposite of multiplying by negative 15. I have to do it to both sides for the equation to stay equal. And I get 6 and 2 thirds kilograms. And this is where the, the mass isn't realistic. That's very light. Um, if the if the force were 200 newtons, then this would be a thousand for the impulse, and you'd get another zero there. Um, you'd get 66 and two thirds kilograms, which would be a more realistic mass. So anytime you're stuck, organize the problem with variables, and then re re remind yourself that impulse is the change in momentum, and then write out these equations to see what you can plug in, and then sometimes the logic will kind of flow from there.